apparently he listened. Right? So when they was asking me, you know, why ain't nobody killed him, they tried. As I said in um, one of the other videos, they tried to kill him. Right? But most, well, most of us don't rock with Farrakhan because we believed that uh, uh, I'll get to the Scientology in a minute. I told Farrakhan, I sent Farrakhan a message about Dianetics. Mm -hmm. I did that. Right? right. When they sent, uh, the brother that was teaching me name was Everett X. Right? And the guy that was overseeing him was named Abdullah, who was over the prison ministry. Mm -hmm. And a lot Elijah Muhammad can talk through Everett X, and if you wasn't real perceptive, you would never notice the switch. But if he was perceptive, you'd know that when he talked about the radio head, he was using this boy for a radio head, mm -hmm. right? And it was like I was being personally tutored by the messenger on how to get caught up. Right. Right. So one of the things I gave back was Dianetics. Why did I refer Dianetics back to the to Farrakhan? Because in Dianetics, all the rest of that Scientology shit they can keep. But that one book it is literally tell you how thoughts is processed. That's such a critical key to understanding how information go through the brain to learn to be a teacher by giving information that connect dots that most people miss. Right. That's from the study of Dianetics, the original Dianetics book. Now, I read auditing sessions, hundreds of auditing sessions that they had. I, one of the joints I was at had like a whole bunch of these big books from Scientology, and they were actual auditing sessions. I read all that shit. Mm -hmm. The only thing I would ever ever refer anybody to is they had a magazine that was a cold piece of work in Dianetics. The rest of it is they was doing for Pale Face in Hollywood what the Nation of Islam did for Tupac and several other artists out there to make sure that they was being bullied by the same motherfucker, the JDL. Mm -hmm. right? No matter who you is, when you're in Hollywood, you're getting extorted by him. You're either paying him or you're going don't suffer the raft and, and the pale face call them star whackers. Mm -hmm. But our people don't talk about them. Right. Right. And they work with some people out of New York. They call wasps, which means white Anglo-Saxon Protestants. Right. Who had their own little organization. And they was the ones who originally was funding hip hop for uh, uh, the original record labels and then they ran into some people that, and they don't belong here or else they fake ass guy Yahweh wouldn't keep threatening to take somebody's shit and give it to them right. they ain't from here so they end up taking over hip hop about 88, 89 the, right when Jerry Heller yeah. came in with NWA mm -hmm. right Clive Davis jumped from R&B and soul over to hip hop with bad boy records and mm -hmm. a lot of stuff that was going on out of New York, right? right? At the same time, Clive owned the Face Records out of Atlanta, right? He owned, it was a couple more black labels that was big at the time. He owned them. Mm -hmm. Clive owned them, but he, he let Babyface and Jimmy Jam running. I pay y'all. I'll pay y'all well, right. but they still feel raping the artists, mm -hmm. right? Now, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, they was in it for the love of the art. They didn't really understand how to protect nobody. Right. You know, so, um, yeah, L. Ryan Hubbard is definitely a cold name. L. Flip Seven. Ryan mm -hmm. is a short version of Ronald on a Reagan flip, right? right? Well, Reagan was a California governor, and um, old Mother Hubbard went to the cover to get her poor dog a bone. Right. When she got there, the cover was bare, right? So oh, it, it's, a, it's a cold name. Uh, I could go deeper into it, but that'll take us all off the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you be knocking, man. I swear. <laughs> yep, you got to 
listen, dig deep, deep about what he's talking about because he'd be on it. I'm telling you. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Daddy Red, I'm going to take another call. I'm going to take a couple more callers in. I don't want to just, just hog it up with just me and you. Right, right. I know. I got it. <laughs> Yeah, but it was good talking to you, bro. All right. I knew. I, I think I think the first anchor was necessary. You, I'm trying to see how it's going to end now, because we coming in off of a Detroit Red Knock, Red Wings onto a dirty Red yep. Flip. I can't hey, make this shit up. One of the dudes when I played football in high school, one of the old cats used to come in and out of prison all the time. He used to call me Red Crow, like that's Red Crow, Red Crow. <laughs> yeah, so. that's a chief name. That's who. That's how we name, name our chiefs. You don't find no, ain't no such thing as a red right. crow, right? right. Yeah. But a crow that's red is a crow that got the blood right, right. right. But he's coming from the crow clan on the totem flip, mm. right? That's what he's telling you. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate it, bro. Yep. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. We get to chop it up again. Yeah, for sure, man. Peace. Peace. I'm from Sacramento, California. Um, I already know you West Coast when you said your name. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, my Most of my kin is from um, the South. So Cherokee, Chickasaw, um, Cherokee, Chickasaw, Choctaw, and my dad, uh, he's Blackfoot Indian. Um, oh, well, Mississippi and Clans. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in between. My bad at my cheeks. I got my wisdom teeth. <laughs> my oh, native man tonight is swollen cheek tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, <Get> <laughs> <laughs> uh, um but yeah uh you you were spitting it's crazy how um everything is lining up uh I'm, i got this on and i got the red dragon on my shirt the red shorts with the dragon on it <laughs> <laughs> everything's in, in synchronization Okay, so stop right there. T-shirts and blue jeans, tops and bottoms, reds and blues. Oh, and blue too hair. I died. I, I got um. You can't rip. Well, like this is it's blue. I can see. I, got, I can see the blue. Yeah, I died a red. Uh, I died one red too. Um, for my friend uh, Keed who passed away. I don't know if you guys know who Lil Keed is, but um, I died. I died one red in honor of him. But um, uh, are we going into Q and A or? Whatever, whatever you want to talk about, you here. Uh, but uh, well, I want to get back to your name in a minute, though. But we're gonna start with your cue, with your question. Okay. Um. So I had a question. Like, okay. So me being young, like I've always hung around like the elders. Um, and I've I've always been like the type of person like to absorb knowledge and stuff. I never really fit in with people, but it's like people assume that I've always had like my way and stuff, and it was always like weird ways of how like i would um i'm normally like to myself like i'm a people person i'm cool but just nobody really has anything to talk about like for real so it's um I'm you're normally, extroverted introvert hmm? yeah <laughs> you're I mean, extroverted if I'm, introvert if I'm, around the, if I'm around the right people i'll hang out with people every day but it's just it's not <laughs> okay so let me tell you what's going on with your nephew you already know this <clears throat> but i'm just gonna be your confirmation today when you born to be a chief, the old, old people keep you around old people. Yeah. Right? Your mother and your grandparents was responsible for that because you was born to be a chief. Yeah. Okay. Now, you're going to be wired a certain way. And pe people are going to take the way you behave to make it to that you got everything that you like catered to, but you're not. Yeah, I, I would say more in the spiritual realm though, because I I, I peeped a lot. Like I'm I'm a person like like that's that's why detail. exactly why they had you around elders. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, because they passing on spiritual vision. Right now, when you name them clans, you name. Oh shit, I'm getting hot. <laughs> yeah. When you name them clans, you name. That's big mama. When you name, <laughs> oh, excuse me. When you name the clans that you named. And then you describing what you when you said they put you with elders that you grew up around elders all the, you know I already know you you being you being refined without telling you what to do yeah because 
if I could show you a better way, you would do it. But if I tell you how to do it, you ain't going to never do it. Right. Right, you gotta learn. You'll never do it. But if you see me do it and you see that it's work, you will use it. Yeah, that's the same thing with wisdom. Mm -hmm. If you you see the wisdom and use and being applied, you will be more apt to apply it and use it. Yeah. The sooner you expose to the elders, the faster you download the processor that we call wisdom maker, mm -hmm. the aim soap. Now, only thing you got to do is go through your black sheep shit. Yeah. Your black sheep shit is everybody acting like you ain't there, but when they see you, they act like like you should already know you the man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause it's yeah, that bullshit. Like, I... shit. Motherfucker, I'd get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the thing is, it's like I was so used to getting the bare minimum like from people. So it was like when I just, they wanted the best for me and stuff, but they, they taught me what they knew. I don't really take anything personal, you know, like, cause it's, you know, it's what they know. You can't teach someone what you don't know. So um, I just, I couldn't really work. Like I couldn't really stick to like a, a nine to five and stuff. I make, I make music, you know that already, but I just want to tell people that, but um, it was just, I was always like counted out. Like I'm the oldest child, but, when I was around, when I grew up around my cousins, I was the baby. And so once I became like a, a big brother, then it was like, uh, I, I understood like the the parallels, you get what I'm saying? And so um, I understood a lot of stuff, but I was young at the same, like I'm, I'm still young, but um, I still, it was still stuff I had to figure out. And uh, it's just, everything just, just fell in line, like, um, even the fact that I was able to um, uh, be a part of YSL and uh, get to see all this stuff, be the first one from my city to do all this stuff. And the crazy part is my great grandpa who had passed away, um, he, he's, from, um, he's from Alabama and he's um, Chickasaw. And so um, when, when um, Thug had dropped Lifestyle, I seen the music video and I had seen- um, Did you say just, Young Thug? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna make sure I'm on the same page, keep going. And and so uh, I had seen his sister and I hear, cause um, my grandpa had passed away in, in 2011. And so when um, we started hearing, when uh, he started to blow up or whatever, um, around like 2015, 2016, I was a freshman. And so I see his sister in, in the in the music video, and my grandpa says, "You're gonna work with her one day." Mind you, he he passed away in 2011, and I hear this in like 2015, 2016. And so, uh, oh, they said what part of Alabama? My grandma's from Camden, but I don't I don't remember exactly where my uh, great grandpa is from. But um, he said, "You're gonna work with her." And at this time, I wasn't even making music. I didn't know how. Like I was always into. Wait, into you make music? music? Yeah. What kind of music? you do uh alternative but i'm starting to see i'm i'm into wait um, wait slow, slow down slow down slow down slow down okay you make your own music the kind of music you like yes okay now the next question is this what's your favorite song you did Sigil seven and i got it on my computer right now <laughs> <laughs> okay Sigil seven all right and you know i'm number seven right I am too. My birthday in July. My name is Evan too. I don't know. And look, this is this is what I got. I had it in my dream. This is the Sigil Seven. You see how it's the hoodie at the top, and then right here, it was originally like Anubis. I seen it in my dream, and I woke up and I drew it. And so uh, we going back to your name now. We almost back to your name. That's where we hit it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so this is a. Uh, it was originally Anubis right here, but I put the ears back, and it looks like it's a combination of Anubis and a dragon. So, um, uh, yeah, it, <laughs> everything is just the fact that everything Anubis like does have a dragon form, mm -hmm. but we don't talk about that because that's going to tie him back to the Mexican Zolo and take him away from being an African jackal, and that's going to fuck up their whole life. Yeah, and I've been, I, I realized that, like, before, like, I went into consciousness and 
the whole pan African thing, and you know the stuff behind that that disguises to make us look into a land that we ain't even really from, or like, you know, uh, we've been taught to look look in everywhere else except for ourselves. But I, I remember when you said uh, on your live the other day that here we've always had raw talent, you know, like all the leaders, all the artists, or what, everyone will come here to try to make something evolve. And so when I grew up around um, uh, Africans and stuff at my school. I realized like a lot of them are book smart, but they're not really like street smart per se. Like the ones that I bumped into. I'm like, we've been looking Oh, uh, yeah, been, that, that that that's no, no. no. Yeah, and we if I'm you like, fucking with Nigerians, a Nigerian will talk you out of the hair that's in your iron pit if he can make a dollar out of it. <laughs> and you won't and even they, know you look, and you won't even know you gave it to him. Yeah, and and the Ethiopians too. I'm like Wait a minute. Y'all don't even know where y'all came from. Like and Ethiopians are wired different. They 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 wired toward more of spirituality and warfare cuz yeah. that's how they evolved. But the Nigerians from the inner parts of like uh uh Lagos mm -hmm. where it's a bustling city, you think you city smart? They will they will have all your shit and you won't even know you gave it to them until they remind you that you gave it to them. Right. They good. <laughs> they good. They know, yeah. how, and then they got this thing in certain cultures over there where they know how to read tribal uh, habits, mm -hmm. and they exploit those. Yeah. Yeah. Like over here, this is a tribal traditional habit. Yeah. Right? Oh, I got this too. I'll be smoking out of there. This is a uh, Creek Indian. So, like when when I roll my papers or whatever, I'll put it in here and smoke out of it. And it's a uh, coyote tail and stuff. You see how it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want to cut you off. But yeah. I got my stuff ready. I'm like, mm -hmm. if you put me in, I got to show you my okay, stuff. Now, because they know this is a cultural phenomenon, mm -hmm. they going to try to figure out. They don't want to sell you the herb. They want to figure out how to sell you the rap. Right. Because <laughs> right. they know that you we can use the pipe. We can smoke the herb out the pipe. Right. Or we can smoke it in, in cigar form. Or we'll make right? something new. And they'll sit there. Look, these motherfuckers will sit there and they'll watch your whole 